Hello guys, Winston here. This is going to be a fairly straightforward video today. Not much in the way of design, mostly a discussion about the cam and machining strategies I used for this project. Here's the backstory. An acquaintance of mine was looking to make a carbon fiber frame for a one-off prototype robotic vehicle and offered to buy a little extra carbon fiber I could keep in return for my services. Normally, this is something I would steer clear of, but hey, free material. Thankfully, my client was very clear in describing what he wanted and provided all the necessary drawings and documentation to make the CAD and CAM process fairly pain-free. All of the parts were flat pieces with no complex features to speak of, and I had DXFs of all the parts provided. So all I needed to do in Fusion 360's design workspace was to extrude the profiles upwards to the thickness of my provided carbon fiber sheet, which was an eighth of an inch. But to make the most of my material, I would also have to arrange the parts to make the best use of my precious carbon fiber. The better I did with nesting, the more material I would have left over to play with later. So I fiddled around with a couple permutations until I had something I liked. Also, while I was at it, I might have snuck in a license plate frame in there, because it's not often you get a carbon fiber sheet wider than 12 inches to play with. License plates, at least in the US, are about 12 by 6 inches, so a decorative frame needs to be just a tiny bit larger than that. With regards to the cam for this project, I had two challenges. The first was speeds and feeds. Carbon fiber is a material I'm still not entirely comfortable with yet. I've only machined a tiny prototype piece in it once before, so I don't have a cutting recipe I'm super confident with. To get a starting point, I always look at speeds and feeds from tooling manufacturers that make composite or fiberglass cutting end mills. I personally like starting with info from places like Harvey Tool and Amana, which have incredibly diverse catalogs of end mills. From those charts, I deduced a reasonable chip load to start with, which was about two thousandths of an inch, maybe a tiny bit more depending on the cutter. Since I'm using a non-industrial CNC machine, I'm going to back off a little bit to just below 2000. If I go with a recommended surface speed of 400 SFM, that locks my ratio of spindle RPM to feed rate to roughly 20,000 RPM and 36 inches per minute. For this project, I would also be backing off on my depth of cut, because again, non-industrial CNC, so instead of one times the diameter of the cutter, I would aim for half a diameter depth of cut. Remember, when in doubt, you can always take a shallower cut, but you should avoid taking too slow of a cut. That's how you get friction and heat and all sorts of bad things that come from that. Besides speeds and feeds, my other concern in figuring out how to machine these pieces was work holding. I know that I'm generally a proponent of double-sided tape, usually out of laziness, but when you're dealing with a lot of thin parts and materials that get pulverized into fine dust, you really don't want to be cutting into tape. That creates a paste of adhesive residue and carbon fiber shreds sticking to your end mill and getting smeared all along the sidewalls of your parts. This is where the design of these parts became an asset. The carbon fiber pieces I was cutting all had holes in them, and they were distributed pretty well across each part. So if I bored these holes first, then drove wood screws into the holes, I could probably securely hold each part all the way through until the last toolpath without a single tab or piece of tape. Because, oh yeah, I also didn't want to have to take a Dremel to carbon fiber to separate these parts later. In my cam setup, I have some interpolated holes, drilling tool pads, and then a series of cutouts in a very specific order. Here's how that played out at the CNC. First things first, on my Shaboko, I clamped down my carbon fiber sheet. I know how much margin I have between the edges of the sheet and the inner features of my parts, so the only thing I really need to worry about clearance-wise is to make sure my dust boot doesn't run into a clamp. Then I loaded up a 2mm end mill and interpolated the holes in my parts. These are Hosley brand cutters off Amazon, but I don't think it really matters. All of the ones out of China are basically the same. The criteria I looked for was a burr type cutter, kinda like a chip breaking end mill, with a titanium nitride coating. These will last about an hour or two and you can toss them out afterwards with how cheap they are. I should probably point out for anyone unfamiliar with the safety risks here that carbon fiber dust is pretty unhealthy to breathe. You've got the usual physical hazards of dust being a respiratory irritant, but with a chemical bonus hazard of resin byproducts entering your lungs. So avoid breathing this in. I'm not using a brush on my dust boot for filming purposes, but I will also note that I have my hoses hooked up directly to a rigid shop vacuum without a cyclonic separator in series. The hose just goes straight into the vacuum's heparated bag and filter. Under normal circumstances, I know my less powerful, fine turbo vacuum will neutralize the downdraft of my router and then some, 
So here, with my more powerful rigid vacuum, I am 100% confident that any carbon fiber particles small enough to become airborne will not escape this setup. And failing that, for this project, I would usually put on a dusk mask if I was sticking my head into the enclosure to examine anything closely during cutting. After making a bunch of holes in my carbon fiber sheet, I swapped to a 16th inch and mill to peck drill into my MDF waste port. I'm pre-drilling holes here because I want my work holding screws to go into my waste board without too much resistance. That way I can better gauge how much force is going into tightening the screws down against the carbon fiber as opposed to driving them through the MDF. The screws I'm using here are just some half inch number 4 pan head screws which just barely fit through the 8th inch holes in the parts I'm cutting out. During this phase I would carefully screw down my carbon fiber to just barely pass what I would consider to be two finger tight. There's nothing scientific here, just my best judgement. And now I think it's pretty safe to say that this sheet isn't going anywhere and I can ditch the clamps from phase 1, except for these two on the side. I wanted to trim off the excess carbon fiber to make it easier to store and use later, so I had a trace operation in Fusion that would slice off this extra stock. Those clamps, plus a little manual reassurance, would keep that section secure until I could safely remove this stock later. My cheapo 2mm router bit went back onto my CNC, and I proceeded to start my contour cuts. The biggest thing to remember here when you're doing cam for this operation is to make sure your retract height is sufficient to clear the screw heads and then some. I don't know about you, but I always used to make my retract height as minimal as possible because of how slow the stock plunge rates were on the Shaboko. And this step went about as well as I could have asked for. The fuzziness that you see here is mostly just the protective film that I left on the carbon fiber sheet, and that's also why I wasn't too worried about the panhead screws marring the surface of the carbon fiber. That's not to say the cut edges here are absolutely perfect, but afterwards a quick brush with 320 grit sandpaper will take off any stray fibers. Just make sure that you do this step near the influence of a vacuum. One procedural thing I will point out is that I always made sure to turn off the router before turning off the vacuum at the conclusion of a run. If there is any lingering dust in the dust boot or on the table, you don't want the router downdraft to blast that into the air when you shut off suction. And then, as you've no doubt seen, there is a little bit of dust residue on the parts after machining. I suspect it's a mix of heavier particles and smaller ones affected by electrostatic attraction. So I just went over the sheet with a vacuum hose to fully decontaminate the work area. In the end, I think the best reward was seeing all of my parts laid out like this. I did have one part move on me because of insufficient tightening of the screws, but even with that shifting, the part stayed put and didn't jump out, jam the cutter, clog my dust boot, or anything else. It was such an uneventful failure, I didn't even notice it until after all the cuts were finished. I just remade that part, screwing it down more aggressively, and it went fine. A 95 plus percent success rate without any drama or hassle of using tape is something I'm more than happy to trade just a little bit of extra time for. I hope you guys got something useful out of this video. If you're machining a lot of flat, tedious parts and have the liberty of using or creating features for work holding, I can highly recommend this strategy. If you're looking to machine carbon fiber, don't forget to slow down your process to make sure you're not overlooking any common sense steps to preserve health and safety. And in case you're wondering, the license plate frame hasn't actually been used yet, it was more a proof of concept. I ended up feeling like the hard edges that cut through multiple layers of fiber didn't look all that great. If you're going to create an over-engineered license plate frame like this, I would highly recommend a wet layup over a mold and then trimming that afterwards. A smooth, continuous weave is going to look much better. Until next time, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back soon-ish with more CNC content and vaguely interesting projects.